Hey, Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Friday Sit Rep. We got a lot in the pipeline this week, including the new M50i Sherman. But before we get started, a couple of quick notes from me. One, as you guys hopefully know by now, we have two new YouTube channels as well as a TikTok that have recently launched. We're also working on a podcast as well on Spotify and everywhere else. Uh, so we've got a lot of new social media, a lot of new content getting ready to roll out. And because of that, some things are going to be structured a little different. Uh, no exception with the Sit Rep. So you'll see that we'll have a little bit different format today. We're going to keep that moving forward. Uh, so as always, make sure you drop a comment, let us know what you think. Uh, but remember, more comprehensive. Uh, breakdowns of these models will be uh, happening on our designer studio channel uh, so that we have a little bit more time to get them to where they need to be and look nice on camera and everything. Uh, so just check the link in the description if you'd like to subscribe to that channel as well as any of our other social media. Otherwise, I've kept you waiting long enough. Let's dive in take a look at what's new this week on BrickMania.com. Okay, so like I said in the intro, our featured pre-order this week is the M50i Sherman, designed by Nate, uh, affectionately known as Sergeant Nate here at the uh, HQ. Solid build, just like all of his tanks. Um, obviously, the man knows his Shermans, and this is no exception. Um, nice little detailed engine compartment. We'll have a little bit more of a breakdown uh, from him as we check into the design room, but wanted to go over some of the initial specs for it. Obviously, that awesome 76 millimeter barrel by Brick Arms, um, as well as kind of some upgrades and tweaks to the suspension, various forms on the chassis, etc. So just all in all, a really nice solid build and a great way to kick off our uh, Six Days War uh, monthly theme. Moving on from there, we have the Perseverance Rover, which Beyond its very ornate construction, uh, the real highlight of this kit is the incredible printing. I mean, there are just details everywhere you look. Um, and it's nice and colorful too. It really pops on that white. Not a, uh, not a color scheme we get to use too terribly often here at Brickmania, but obviously Space Race, uh, it has found its home. Really cool kind of simulated suspension stability thing on the side. I'm not 100% familiar with its exact function, but it sure looks cool and it, uh, it looks neat rolling over bricks and whatnot. Uh, we will have a more comprehensive breakdown of this along with the rest of our Space Race line, space race line in the future. Uh, but for now, just take a little closer look at this thing, checking out some of the functions. Uh, this one, not a pre-order and actually available right now. And like most of our Space Race stuff, it was designed by Amanda and Austin. Moving on from there, we've got Einstein, which is a really cool collaboration with the Einstein estate itself. Um, one of those one of those figures that I think a lot of people are like, holy smokes, how don't I already have one of those? Um, which is pretty cool. So nice to see him with the, with the Brickmania flair. Like I said, an official partnership, which is awesome. Um, we will have to go over this a little bit more in depth with Amanda, its creator, uh, because modeling that hair piece, as you can probably tell, not easy. Um, so we'll hear a little bit more about that. And then moving on from there, we also have the Apollo Mission Commander. Uh, not too terribly much different uh, between this and the Lunar Commander. Mostly it is the fact uh, that our 3D print uh, quality has great greatly increased. increased. Um, it, it's just a much more durable piece for both the helmet and that life support system on the back. Uh, so those are the upgrades there. Now, finally, we have uh, the Perfect Caliber uh, Brick Arms AKGL with that awesome kind of plum wood color. Uh, this was the one that was previously included with our Ukrainian Rifleman, now available standalone. And thank goodness, because it is a very nice piece. There you have it. That's the rundown for everything heading to BrickMania.com this Friday. All right, Brick Maniacs, we are back in the design room at the uh, desk of Sergeant Nate to get a closer look at uh, his upcoming rundown for the Six Day War monthly theme. Obviously, the I Sherman, the M50, on pre order we today. Uh, but he's got a lot more in the lineup as well. So, I Nate, do, but, tell us what uh, you're doing. This is marketed, so let's talk about this. Yeah, first. absolutely. So, this is the M50 I Sherman. The, eh, this is an interesting one because for a lot of the. First of all, not a Super Sherman. want to clarify that. The Super Sherman is something different. Indeed. I, uh, that's. I made one personally, but that's not a kid's. But this is mm -hmm. the M50 specifically. This is a unique tank because the M50 is... It's not like true designation because, like, for the Israelis, they just took whatever they could get after World War II. Mm -hmm. And it's just a hodgepodge of stuff. And then modified beyond that, too. Yeah, modified beyond that. Because, um, so, for example, this one right here has an M4A4 chassis, which mm -hmm. is the same chassis as the Firefly. Okay. This is not, it's not the same as the one Kati did, but I took a lot of inspiration from that to make this sure. for my own. Uh, Translates style. well. Yeah. And uh, and the, M the M4A4s never had HVSS suspension. Okay. This is the easiest suspension. That was never put on an M4A4 until the Israelis did mm -hmm. it. Interesting. And typically for the M50s, from what I could find, a lot of them didn't use the M4A4 chassis. They basically used the M4A3 chassis, so, you know, easy chassis. Mm -hmm. But I went for the M4A4 to make it a bit more distinct, and also, I based it off 
off this one specifically from the one at Tank Farm. So Oh cool. That's so, some up close inspiration. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh yeah, there's a lot of Greebles because they always put stuff on the tank. Mm -hmm. This is a bit kind of like the Cadillac Firefly up there. Well, not, okay, it's not Cadillac, but you know, the fancy one. Yeah, sure. So I try to make this one a little fancy. Fun. Because I don't really know if you could do like a true army builder because it's just such a hodgepodge. It's kind of hard to... Yeah. Are you going to get to the barrel? I'm waiting for you to get to the barrel. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. After all these years, the 76... Nate's prayers were answered. Yes. After all these years, the Brick Arms barrel is finally in tan. <laughs> I've wanted this for years. And it looks phenomenal. Yes. Uh, are those going to be sold individually? I hope so. That's a great question. We'll find we'll out We'll find out, yeah. But if you want one... Get this kit, or this It's a good guy. place to start. Yeah, what you got behind there? Uh, well, I wasn't done with this. Okay. <laughs> That's well, okay, we'll stick with this one. Oh, okay, so it comes with one minifig. Speaking of, weep. Oh, nice. This is a render that a I made. preview? Yep, a uh, new 3D printed helmet. Uh, it's the uh, US Cold War one, but the Israelis somehow got their hand on, hands on them. Yeah, that's what they were using. Yep. Uh, whoop, hey. <laughs> that's for later. Uh, so, like the rest of my stuff, there's it does have a full interior. Um, you can put one dude and a shell in here. Uh, and this also comes with an opening back. Oh, there's also printing here and here. Uh, this also has an engine. So, the funny thing is... Uh, Nice. Look at that. This is not the engine in the Firefly. This is the engine that's in a regular Sherman, but they, but the Israelis took out the multi-bank engine from the Firefly and mm -hmm. put a regular Sherman in, engine there because it was easier to find spare parts. Oh, makes sense. And it worked just fine. Once again, using what they have. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to just to see what all they did with their multiple Shermans. And I will admit, this part just kind of rests on here. But if it fits, it fits, Yeah, right? it fits. But uh -huh. hey, it's easier to open for engine access. Mm -hmm. Uh, this also has a little gun mount in the back. Uh, there will, and it's me, so there's going to be some alternate stickers here. But <laughs> the printing will be A3. I believe that's it's the it's the tank farm one. Oh, okay, cool. There's going to be some identification printing here, on back here. Well, you hear that? Fans of tank farm, you can literally take this tank home. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and also uh, these wheels right here, because typically these wheels only come in like blue gray. So mm -hmm. we did some color shifting and made them match. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's an undertaking. Yeah. And I, thanks to Eric, I finally found a way to make this roll a lot better, but I also included optional instructions to, if you want to move stupid well for playability, basically just remove these jumpers and push the wheels together. Hmm. There you go. If you want it to go real fast. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's also a back. Let me just put this thing back together. There you have it. Very cool. But well, what else you got behind here? All right. This is the M38. I'm going okay. in order. This is the M38 uh, 4x4. This is a Cold War uh, uh, this was made this is made after World War II. Definitely a Cold War era designed uh, 4x4. And it's very similar to the regular one they did. And in my defense, here's a side-by-side -side of the real ones. So this is the World War II one we know, and this is the Cold War M38. Interesting side-by-side. -side. They look exactly the same. Yeah. And here are the, and here are the two of them. Side by side. Now, yeah, the Israeli one is different because tan and cannon, but mm -hmm. you can just see a lot of the design. Because this, I had a hard time wrapping my brain. Like, they're so similar. What do I do different? Mm -hmm. So I basically had these more rounded. There will be printed headlights here and here. Mm -hmm. And some printed identification markings on both sides. Uh, a lot of times, the Israelis didn't put windshields on theirs. I suppose if you got goggles on. Yeah, you got goggles. It's a desert. Enough. Yeah, right. And there's a, they had a funky windshield where it's like you can put the can in, in between there, and I'm not going to try that. So <laughs> there's also this not a ready to shoot. there's also not a thing in the back to because just easier access to climb onto the cannon and mm -hmm. off. Uh, that will come with two minifigs, kind of like the MP four x four. Oh, very cool. Because this one you kind of need to one to drive, one to one to operate. 
you know, just like a goshawk, you have to mm-hmm. two person it. Uh, Makes sense to me. A couple uh, the these two by three plates will be printed for the line, mm-hmm. but I did that with a three by three plate; it'd be a little too thick, so I just went with that. Also, an identification thing here, and. The most interesting undertaking of this month, yeah. the SU-100. This was interesting to pull off. And I know the front is supposed to be a bit rounded. This mantlet was hard. It's a really hard thing to pull off in LEGO. Mm-hmm. And also, I will admit, I uh, for, the S, for the Egyptian SU-100s, they always had like a little uh, thing, like a little uh, storage box here that's merged into that. Mm-hmm. I for I forego that completely because that's impossible to do. Took a crack without. at it and just didn't, didn't have it stick. Uh, yeah, basically, it, mm-hmm. it wasn't going to happen. So, as kind of said, I do have a printed toolbox along the side. Oh, there you go. There will be two printed Egyptian symbols on the side for the Sixty Day War. All these gas cans that will have printing on the ends. Mm-hmm. Not right. Not not those two here because you can't see them. But here, 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 and here, here. Uh, T thirty four hatch with an Egyptian symbol because you know it's off of a T thirty four chassis. Mm-hmm. And this thing has a lot of hatches. All right, open it up. Uh, there will also be a printed 2x4 tile for the front hatch here, because I did not try to break build that. Cool. It has enough hatches already. Also, again, tan barrel. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, this thing sharp. swivels like all the way. Pretty much across the uh, six-day war lineup. Yeah, so the SU-100 was a heavy tank destroyer based off of the T-34 chassis. It showed up a lot in 1944 and was used a lot in the last year of World War II, but, you know, uh, Russia had a lot of stuff to get rid of after World War II because money. Mm-hmm. So they just... So a lot of the Middle Eastern countries were allied with the... had a varying degree of allies or... Of, of, a varying degree of friendliness with the Soviet Union post-war. I don't know if it was if the Egyptian fr- was as friendly with the USSR as Syria was, but they were friendly enough to where well they got some mm-hmm. IS threes and some of these guys. But yeah, I am very, very happily. I'm very, very happy with how the angling came off. Absolutely. With this. this like, I mean, it had to do a little compromise here because the real one, like, the whole bottom thing swivels up and down while mm-hmm. it stays in place, and no. But keeping these to integrate, too, especially without having any Yeah, or and, and in there. I think someone in my comments said, like, oh, this is supposed to be, like, four long. No, the blueprint said three long. And, frankly, it looks better. Trust longs. the blueprints over the internet, I yeah. agree. But the blueprints come from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's a conundrum. Well, there you have it. Oh, also, all these wheels will be printed. I figured. It's just the T-34 print button tan. Mm-hmm. No, not a re- two, printed toolbox here. One e- Egyptian tanker minifig, and we... That is a hard thing to try and research, because we have no idea what they wore. Oh, interesting. So we're just doing a Soviet uniform in tan. Cool. Because you try finding it. A bit of a challenge there, but there you have it. A nice little rundown from Sergeant Nate coming up for these six days of war month. Like I said, that I Sherman on pre-order available right now. Nate, thanks for checking in, man. All right, continuing with our design room check-ins, we have a very exciting announcement here at Brickmania, and that is that we have officially partnered with the Einstein Estate to be able to release his likeness in minifig form. So I have Amanda here to talk a little bit more about this epic creation. As you can see, we already have some some awesome new face artwork as well as 3D printed uh, assets. So Amanda, tell us about this process and how you created the physicist. <laughs> yeah. Um super excited to do this project um it came down the line and i was like oh um, does anyone else want to do this i totally don't dibs oh um, man because i also knew i was going to be having to design and model with hair so mm-hmm. i was like that'd be really cool if i'm doing this anyways can i just do the rest of yeah, it? yeah pretty absolutely. much um and so it all worked out um everyone else's workflows were at a good place so i was like hey um did a lot of research on him um the big thing was the face like you just you have to nail get it, it right so. yeah like some faces where it's like oh it's supposed to be that person you have a little bit of relief room because mm-hmm. it's lego but everyone knows einstein mm-hmm. you know pretty good for a guy who what, died in 1955 he's hung around a bit that's like, true yeah. that's true yeah 1955 and um yeah so um super super psyched so i, I worked really hard on the thing i don't know if you can like scroll up there yeah, absolutely I have a lot of iterations <laughs> of the faces um just Kind of like some of me was a little older, some of them uh-huh. some stash, a lot more stash. Yeah. <laughs> um, so kind of, kind of went back and forth a lot, mm-hmm. um, and just kind of, I had a, 
so much fun. I, I really enjoy doing faces. It's kind of like just super good times. Well, we still settled on two for this one, right? And we did. So yeah, this is obviously around? tongue out version. Which is iconic. <laughs> right. And then, get that going. Beautiful. Oh no, stand up. You can do this. There we go. And then that kind of the more classic look. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was super fun. Um, after looking at a bunch of pictures, he uh, he seemed to be a big sweater guy as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously he's he's got his very classic suit that everyone knows him in as well. Um, but I thought, you know, we're gonna. There's no way that anyone doesn't have a suit around if they want to put him in the normal yeah, suit. Yeah, right, right. right. So um, give so him I, something unique. Yeah, give him the sweater. I, I really kind of wanted to try my hand at a sweater, like a knitted sweater on top of it. Um, so we got that going. Um, kind of the rumpled collar in there. Uh, good old fashioned, just normal pants mm -hmm. and shoes. Guy did not apparently like wearing shoes very much. Um, definitely didn't like socks, it sounded like. Uh, <laughs> I can there, relate. There are some, <laughs> I suppose, there's some, uh, there's some pretty famous pictures of him with just like barefoot or in like women's sandals just because they were the like less Whatever's amount of shoe that he could find. Yeah. Um, Albert, you strange, strange enigma, you. Yeah, genius, right? Um, yeah, and so got the got the back of the sweater pretty nothing nothing horribly interesting happened in the back of the sweater, it's just, but it's a good sweater. Mm -hmm. I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, then the hairpiece that was a challenge, but a lot of fun. It's um, there's no symmetry. No symmetry. You know, I uh, kind of started one pattern. I was like, okay, that's the general shape, and started filling stuff in. Went, nope, that's not working. Mm -hmm. That looks. Nothing like it. It's like, how do you not make it look like it's out of Dragon Ball Z? You know what I mean? So many of those Lego hair pieces for Ninjago yep. like that. That's oh, exactly what totally. they look like. I agree with you. This is not bad. I appreciate it. I, I this was this was probably. I mean, there's definitely been like the Generation Three helmet with a big bubble shield. That one took me a while just because there were so many weird proportions and not a lot of pictures out there mm -hmm. that were super helpful. Um, Whereas this one, there's like 500 pictures and they're all slightly different um, because it's hair. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this one actually probably took me one of the longer uh, sculpts Models, just, uh, yeah, okay. just because it, there's a lot going on and you kind of got to try to catch it and not make it look, it's got to look iconic from the get go. Mm -hmm. so. uh, yeah, so I was pretty happy. Um, I think it's, it was a super fun figure to work on though. Yeah, definitely a cool endeavor. Very excited to see where it continues from there. But now you've got your first taste of Albert Einstein, the physicist, now on BrickMania.com. Amanda, thanks for checking in. Thank you. All right, that'll do it for me on a Friday. Make sure to check out those two new YouTube channels as well as the rest of our social media. And thank you very much for watching.